on that one. That was fairly interesting, a bit tense. Let's see if the advantages were there or if... Okay, so let's have a little look. So as usual, looking for any major dips in the evaluation bar, see if there's anything we need to work on. So I felt a little bit tentative opening here. Brought the bishop out, just waiting for the opponent to strike, but um, they seem to be going backwards, so I thought, okay, let's um, see if we can extend a bit. And again, they went backwards with the bishop. So this key thing about the initiative um, is really quite good in being able to understand the initiative, but also being able to understand if the person is going backwards like this, they might be doing like a like a robodope, you know, you don't know, you know, so just because they've gone backwards does not mean that they aren't going to come back with a good counter attack. So I've got to make sure that my attack um, has got some sort of sure footing so I can retreat when needed. Um, so in this case here, my knight is kind of hanging up there in front of the king, but it's not doing the right lot now to chase their bishop away. So we pushed our pawn up looking to potentially come and attack the, the bishop here. But they've done the small piece attacking the knight. So we bring the knight back. And they move the bishop. So we can attack the bishop. And he's looking to say, well, I don't really want to exchange. So it's not too bad at the minute. Still showing Jewish type thing. So we captured. And it's not, didn't even frown on that capture either. So it's fairly Stephen Stevens all the way through here up to this point. So we go and attack the bishop. So we take the bishop off the board, showing a slight advantage. In fact, now that's like a major advantage there. And I don't know if there's a major advantage that I took off, took off here. I was bringing, thinking of bringing a knight coming across here and stuff like that, but I thought, well, I don't want to lose tempo in our mantra, knights on the bishops. Um, so we take this bishop off. Didn't think that it was too bad a bishop because it does have the aspect of coming here. If it was completely blocked or you know all their pawns were on say dark squares and stuff, we would, probably would have left it because it's not going to cause any trouble to anybody. But it just did have that little element there of being able to come out and uh, start causing some trouble. So that's why we took it off the board. It's actually showing minus seven point five. After in my head, obviously. We're going to be a piece up, or a minor piece up, and the computer does like material gain, doesn't it? And positionally, I'm not looking at this like it's a winning position. I'm looking at it, yes, we've got the piece off the ball, but what can we do about it? So I'm a firm believer in, well, you can have as many pieces on the board as you want, but if they're not in the right places, then they really are tantamount to being useless. So now we're looking to um, go opposite their rook with our rook, but really wanted maybe to give the uh, bishop some space, excuse me, if we had time to bring it here and potentially bring it here. The amount of games that I have played util utilising that concept, this bishop has never ended up here. <laughs> At a push, it probably ends up here, but that's as far as it ends up going. 
So I don't know why in my head I, I say, oh, it's going to come here and it's going to come here. It never seems to have that time to do that. Okay, so anyway, we're still making space for the bishop so that we can use the rook on this file. So that's the rationale behind it, just giving it some space. So we now start pushing forward onto the head of the snake and we grab the head of the snake and then they start doing some weird, not weird, it felt like a weird combination of poor manoeuvres and so we moved the knight out of the way and then they captured again. So again, like we said, this bishop really doesn't end up getting the time to move but we can make use of it by capturing the pawn back. And then their, cap their pawn is highly um, developed up the board. And look at that dip. This is why we do these evaluations. I felt really good about that move. You know, I mean, I'd seen this move a while back, you know, oh yeah, coming here, putting pressure onto the queen. Queen can't really take. Oh, look at that. It's actually saying rook takes here. I didn't see any of that. I thought this was a really good move. This is why we do evaluation. You know, if the opponent doesn't see these things, then obviously, but this is out and out winning for them. Look how the table's turned. We're out and out winning here. This is saying knight f6. So I'm just bringing the knight back here, protecting this rook. I felt no danger whatsoever at all in this position. <gasps> oh, shocking. So if it goes there, then we've only got two pieces. Well, one piece protecting, then he comes down and whips everything off the board. Oh, my gosh. Oh, dear. Oh, I can't even take it. Oh, my life. Oh, we could, but it's like... Oh my days. Wow. <laughs> oh dear. That's a, something for the Rolodex, is that one? Oh, brilliant. Okay, yeah, yeah. Out and out winning here. Feeling comfortable with that, but just needed to check. So whenever you've got like opposites with the rooks, you just got to double check, make sure you're not going to lose out in tempo. So I lost that in tempo there, big stab. Oh, but the opponent didn't see it. So we're back to out and out winning again. So we take our turn to take the rook off the board. That's essentially what they should have done to us. Oh dear. You see, you play the games and then you feel like you've done a good game. But well, something in the back of my head always, especially the ones that I'm analysing, uh, in the back of my head, I'm saying to myself, I don't know, that felt too smooth, and I'm sure I would have missed something. Or, in fact, I'm sure the opponent has missed something that made me look that good. In case in point, in this game here, the opponent missed an opportunity to wipe me out. The game was too smooth. So they captured... And we brought the knight up, just seeing if there's any other major dips at this point now. So we're looking to exchange. And we just pushed the pawn to stop the knight from jumping into this square. And we're looking to exchange again, they're not having any of it. So take the pawn off the board with the knight. Reposition the queen, attacking the pawn, no protection on. And then attack the rook, if this shoveling there, a little bit of attack on that file. So now... This is basically all over really because the bishop is controlling this square nicely on here. So the only piece that can take this rook is, is the rook. And the queen's going to come in for a checkmate. So yep, yeah, the game felt so smooth but realistically it was only smooth because the opponent didn't take advantage of the advantage that they had. Excellent game. Good lesson that.